Hi, you guys. It's your girl, Codename Chanel, and I'm back at it again. I okay, so let me tell you guys, it's been lit, okay? Because you guys have been subscribing and I see my channel growing. I'm just like so happy and i appreciate it all and i don't take it for granted let me tell you guys one more thing i see your emails i see your dms and they're not being ignored okay because we're gonna get to that right right but before that i have a story time for you guys and y'all not even gonna believe it it's gonna be unbelievable and it's gonna be something that you need to watch because it's literally unbelievable so if you're new to my channel do me a favor go ahead and subscribe Go ahead and like, go ahead and comment, state your little opinion, and hit the notification bell below. And if you're a returning subscriber, like I said, it's all love. I love you guys and it's all love. So listen, y'all, if y'all want the sauce and y'all not going to run off with it all, I got a little story time for y'all. So stay tuned. And once again, thank you guys so much for all the likes, all the comments, all the subscribes. It's not unnoticed. And look, especially about my little sugar daddy saga that I got going on, I see you guys. Okay? We good. Okay. We good. So don't worry, a new video is coming soon. But if you want to hear this crazy ass story time about how I got tricked into going to Mexico with a with a friend so that she can get a BBL, y'all not even ready. Okay, let me tell you guys something. The reason why I started, why I decided to do this, um this video was because the girl that i'm doing the video about and we're going to call her yasmin actually reached out to me on social media after years of me not talking to her and she commented when i had posted something about my youtube channel just thanking you guys at the time i had 1k subscribers so i was thanking you guys and she's like oh my god you have a youtube channel um i always knew you had the personality for youtube and um what's your youtube channel i just hope all is well I hope you remember me. This is what she said. Like she said, I hope that you remember me, but this is this is Yasmin. And then she said all that stuff. Remember you? How could I forget you? How could I forget? How could I forget the trauma that you put me through? You are the reason why I don't trust these hoes. Okay? You're the reason why. Okay, no, not the reason why. Because there's a lot of bitches that done stabbed me in my motherfucking back and did some shady shit. But she is the first person I would say successfully manipulated me. Just a low down dirty goddamn shame. Y'all, she she did she did her like she did me so fucking dirty. Okay, y'all. So let's get started with this story. All right, once upon a time on Instagram. I was real lit, all right? So I'm lit right now. I got like 6,000 subscribers. But back in the day, I had like 11K. Like, I was real lit and really known in my city. I'm from San Diego, if you guys already don't know. That's where I'm from. So, you know, I would get likes from other girls. Girls would comment like, oh, yeah, let's turn up, blah, blah, blah. And there was this one girl in particular. She knew. Okay, so it was this one girl in particular. She knew, um... She was from New York. I could tell by her page. I could tell that she lived, still lived in New York. But she would visit visit California every once in a while. And I seen that the reason why she would visit California was to see this military nigga. Sorry, excuse my lingo. This military guy named Rodney. And his real name, we not, we, we not changing a lot of names in the story. Because I'm trying to keep it funky. I'm trying to keep it 100. His real name is Rodney. So whatever. To, she would do that to go see Rodney. Anyway, so, so Rodney, like, I, I think he knew her, and I knew Rodney from around the way. He'll be in the club, you know what I'm saying? So, I always knew him from, like, literally around the way, and he knew me, too. Like I said, I had a lot of Instagram followers, so he would comment on my pictures every once in a while. So, that's, that's how I was like, okay, she's a real person. You know how in the back of your head, you be like, is this person a catfish or something? She was real pretty, too. So, she's a real person. They know each other. They hung out, blah, blah, blah. So... She, me and her, it, like, this had to be over, like, a year time frame. Like, this had to be over a year. Me and her would message each other. We even went as far as text messaging each other because at the time, Instagram didn't have the DMing. So, it went to, like, text messaging each other and stuff like that. And we would always talk. She would always keep me updated. And it seemed like she had, like, a really hard life. Like, she had, like um you know her mom was like on drugs and me and her really could relate with that and um 
she always had like guy issues and she always be like, oh my God, when I when I get some more money or if Rodney pays for my ticket, I'm coming back to California and we got to turn up. And I'm like, okay, it's lit. I'm always turned up. And I, like I said, she always had like a sad story, which should have been like sign number one. But I always just felt so bad for her sometimes because she would text me and be like, girl, it's a horrible day. Like my boss was just... um talking about like how he has to let people go and like it would just always be something fucking sad or her mom was like still really sick and like her mom was still on drugs it was just bad okay so that's that so y'all i'm sorry i'm paying with my 99 cent lip gloss and i just i why do i do this why do i do this why am i like this why am i like this anyway so that happens or whatever like you know we text each other or whatever so then one day out of the blue she texts me she's like oh my god i'm gonna come see rodney we have to turn up i said we have to they're like no bueno we're turning up what's up what's up when are you coming she was like oh i'm coming um what did she say she was like oh i'm coming in uh, like uh, two weeks or whatever Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, cool. You know, let me know when you get here. I was like, who are you staying with? And she was like, I was going to stay with Rodney, but he stays on the ship. Now, some do stay on the ship. So, they don't have their own apartment. They stay on the ship. And she was like, I can't stay with him, but he said I can stay on the Beacon. Which is, if you're from San Diego, and the Beacon is on 32nd Naval Base, and it's like lit. Nothing but fine-ass military niggas. Like, every fucking place. But it's ratchet. It's, it's ghetto. Apartment building. It's supposed to be like luxury condos for military. And it just ended up turning ghetto. Anyway, so she tells me that. And I'm like, and she tells me to do. She's staying with Joseph. Fine ass. Joseph. Oh my God. He was so fucking fine. And she was like, yeah, like he said, I could stay there with Joseph and such and such. And she was just naming all these niggas. And I'm like, okay, is he going to be there? She was like, no, he's not going to be there because he has um duty. And if you don't know what the military is, duty means that you have to work 24 hours. So I was like, girl, you need to stay with me. Oh, bitch, are you dumb, 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 stupid? And another red flag because how, I don't even know this girl. Yeah, we've been texting on and off for a year, but I don't know her from a, um, a can of paint. So that's that. But a red flag because on both parts because she manipulated if you guys understand how calculated this girl was she manipulated when i come to find out she manipulated that whole situation so that she could end up at my apartment she was never told to stay at joseph's house Ooh, it's just like i don't even know if i should tell y'all that part but yeah basically she lied i came to find out later on she lied about that uh, let me just continue because this girl manipulated the fuck out of me. I still was like, you know, I was just at the time of my life. Keep in mind, I was married and my husband at the time was actually, um, it, at the time he was in Hawaii. So he was like real busy and stuff like that. So, you know, I would always like be lonely and stuff like that because he couldn't text me. He would have to work like all day, every day, you know? So yes, y'all, I was married. I said husband, right? I know y'all gonna want a story time. I know y'all gonna be like, oh my gosh. I don't wanna talk about that. I was really lonely. I had my friends and stuff, but my friends all had their lives. They couldn't be at my house 24 seven. So I really did want her. I got married when I was really young and I really didn't know myself. And I know this sounds like a cliche, but like I was really at the time trying to find myself. So when my husband was gone for months, I would always be like, you know, trying to be lit and stuff. I'm married. I don't know if somebody has ever been Mary, any of my subscribers been married young, really young before. I just felt like old. As soon as I got married, I felt old. I felt like, you know, I felt like it, I wasn't myself. No, I was, you know, when he was going, I always wanted to be lit. But he knew I was going out. He actually was very encouraging of me going out and like doing stuff. So that's that. Anyway. So the time comes and that day I just happened to get off work and I wanted to get my hair and my nails done. It was the day that she was landing in. So I didn't think that I was going to see her the day that she was landing in because she told me that Rodney was picking her up from the airport. Another one of her tactics, another, another one of her bipolar disorder tactics, another one of her sociopath tactics that she used. She said he was picking her up 
And then she calls me frantic like, Rodney's not picking up the phone. And he said that he was going to be able to pick me up. And I don't know, I'm stranded here. I've never been at this airport before. And now to come to think about it, you have been at this airport, be airport before because you have visited him before. So what are you even talking about, you fucking liar? But I wasn't thinking about that. I started panicking like, girl, oh my God, I can't believe he's not answering the phone. I'm also get my nails done, but afterwards I can come get you. She was like, no, 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 I can't be here. Like, oh my God, I'm having an anxiety. Like, I'll just, I'll just stay here. Then I'm like, oh my God. So in my head, I was like, you know what? Let me stop being like a bitch and being inconsiderate. I had a nail appointment, but I ended up canceling it to go pick her up. So when I pick her up, she has like tons of luggage and I'm just like, girl did you pay for all this you know so she gets in my car we're talking you know we we um we even like you know we hugged we was like oh my god i'm so happy we got to meet each other like you're pretty you're lit you know how bitches do when they link or whatever again red flag get somebody off the internet linking with them like what the fuck where was my head at where was i thinking what was i somebody in the comment tell me what i was thinking Somebody tell me, because the funny part is I'm always skeptical. I'm always suspicious about situations. So the fact that I wasn't like that with her, let me know that she was able to manipulate the situation. And y'all just, y'all don't even know. Because me and her were able to relate that both of our moms were on drugs. And to come to find out that her mom was never even, you know what? Anyway, so we we connected with that or whatever, right? So we um uh, so that's one thing that made us close. And I, we get to my so we go to my house, we drop off her luggage and stuff like that. And you know we start like I think we start like playing music and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, I still need to go get my nails done. Like, da -da -da. she's like, no, your nails look fine. Like, you know, but I'm like, no, I need my nails done. And she's like, no, they look fine. Don't worry about that. She's like, I actually need to go to Walmart. Um, and she started saying how she wasn't feeling good. Like all of a sudden it was like an hour had passed and she already said she wasn't feeling good. And I'm just like, maybe you have jet lag. I don't know. Maybe you should rest. Like we shouldn't go to Walmart because it's like a lot of people and you said you have bad anxiety. Right. And she was like, no, don't worry about it. Like I really do need to go to Walmart. So we go to Walmart and she starts grabbing all this stuff, like bigger size clothes and like, I'm telling you, like, nightgowns that are big. She started grabbing, like, that little gar the uh, garment thing that, you know, Walmart has. Like, the bodysuit thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. I think it's called, a, it's spelled F-A-J-A. -A. You guys know what that is, right? So, she started grabbing one of those. She started, she had tons of pillows. I'm just like, first off, I thought she, like, got the waist trainer body garment thing. Because, you know, maybe she was going to wear it under her outfit. She actually was very, very slim. So, to be honest, let me stop lying to y'all. I didn't really think shit when she was getting all this stuff. I didn't really give a fuck. All my mind was on was going out with my bitches because I wanted my friends to meet her. Um, Getting my nails done still. That's still what I wanted to do. And going out. Like I said, going out getting lit. Anyway, so... She's saying she's not feeling good and she's not going. And I'm like, you know what? You need to call Rodney over here so that he can come chill with you. And she's like, and Yasmin's like, no, don't worry about it. Like, I don't want to bother him or whatever. Like I said, he's on duty. And then I thought about it. And I'm like, yeah, that is why he can't come over here and hang out with you. But like your first night in California and you're by yourself, I feel bad. Like, you know, but I had to go out and do my thing. So I went out with my friends and my friends was like, where is she? Blah, blah, blah. Keep in mind, y'all, none of my friends, none of my family knew that I've never met her in person before. They all thought I knew this girl. So they were just all like, where's your friend? at?" But I'm like, she doesn't feel good. And they're like, that sucks, blah, blah. But we still turned the fuck up, popped some bottles. We was in the club. All right, so I get home. I made I played out a blanket and stuff for her on my couch, but when I get home, she was in my bed. So I was just like, I'm not gonna say anything. She said she wasn't feeling good. Maybe my couch was too hard or something like that. I'll let her sleep in the bed. So I go to sleep on the couch, on the uncomfortable ass couch, and like in the morning, and it's like early in the morning, like she's she's like, Chanel, Chanel, wake up. I'm like, what's up? It's early as fuck morning, girl. I'm hung the fuck over. What's up? She was like, I need to go get blood tests. At this point is when red flag number 9 million should have went off. Like, you need to go get what?
well, you need to do what? It's Saturday. Like, some of the clinics is not. What are you even talking about? She was like, no, I need to go get a blood test. I was like, I, what is going on? You know, at this point, this is when I was just, like, kind of fed up with her. And it didn't So, in my mind, I'm like, maybe she thinks that she got something or whatever. Like, to be honest, I didn't know. And also, I didn't understand. Like, I, I really didn't. And she was like, do you know a clinic that I can go to? Of course, I'm a native San Diego, San Diegan, so I do know a clinic that she can go to. And it was in Logan Heights. So, I take her to the clinic or whatever, like irritated and at this at this time i'm texting my sister i'm like this bitch is weird like i'm just so over her bro like she she hella weird she hella weird bro and i'm over it i'm just over it so i'm just like she goes into the clinic and she comes out and she's like do you have a hundred dollars because the test is like two hundred dollars so you can manipulate me make me take you to get blood make me pick you up from the airport steal my bed or whatever you know that's my that's not too much whatever but you can't get no money out of me ain't 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 nobody sorry guys i thought i broke a nail ain't nobody getting no money out of me and that's just that so she couldn't get no bread out of me like i was like nah like i don't got it um yeah and she still ended up paying for the blood test because yeah but you had it but you was just trying to finesse me on my money Red, another red flag another red flag a begging ass bitch stay away from them type of bitches stay away stay away stay away okay so y'all i hope y'all keeping up i know i talk fast or i don't know if y'all listening slow but the bitch went to go get a blood test early in the morning on a saturday morning and i'm hungover and i'm looking a mess and i'm just like i'm, I'm just not understanding what's going on but I'm, I'm definitely texting my sister i think i text my brother and i'm just like i'm just over this bitch i really don't understand her so when she got in the car, I was just like, you know, um, today's my day off or whatever. And I kind of want to relax and shit. So after she got her blood test, you know, I was like, I just want to relax and shit. Can you call Rodney? Because I'm pretty sure he's off duty now. And, you know, you can hang out with him and stuff like that. Because, you know, whatever. So here comes her tactics. Like, girl, I know I'm, I'm too much right now. I know, like, I just know this. And, like, I really don't want to hang out with Rodney. Like, every time we hang out, he be on some weird shit trying to fuck. But you know what? Just find me a hotel and I'll just go there. I know I'm too much. I'm like, girl, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, I'm hungover. I'm tired. I'm looking a mess. Like, you know, she was like, oh, okay, let me let me just see how far this, this, um, this clinic is from here. And I said, what clinic? What clinic? She's like, I got to go take this blood work to this clinic. So I'm like, give me the address. Clip in mind, I'm from, I'm from here. So I would know how far it is. The address is in a whole different country. Okay? Tijuana, Mexico. All right? And for people who don't know San Diego and Mexico, I'm going to break it down. San Diego from Mexico is 45 minutes. The border, if you live in Chula Vista, San Isidro, Imperial Beach, okay, if you're from Cali, you're going to know everything I'm talking about. It's like 15 minutes away from the border. I have been going to clubs in Tijuana, Mexico, yes, in Tijuana, Mexico, since I was 16, 17 years old. It is legal to drink in TJ at the age 18, so I used to always be there. So when, from the outside looking in, y'all, I know it sounds like, this bitch is crazy. Because she is. Because let's not forget that she is. Let's never give this bitch the benefit of the motherfucking doubt. She's crazy. She's crazy. But let me tell you guys this. I knew TJ so much that when I seen the address, I didn't think too much of it. Because I know that the clinics out there are cheaper. And I don't know what Logan Clinic told her. But she's saying that they said take the results that she has to take the results to there. So my thing was, you know... I started telling her how to get there, like by herself, because I wasn't going. So I was just like, okay, this is what you do. This is what you do or whatever. Da, da. And she was like, you know what? Like my mom, oh, I can't even believe this. But this is how she was. She was like, after I was telling her how to get there. And she's like, you know what? She was looking at her phone like, my mom is really stressing me out. Like, I really don't fucking understand. Like, why she does the shit that she does and it's like everything is going wrong on this trip blah 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 and i'm like what's up what is your mom doing like i said me and her could relate on this situation because both of our mom were drug addicts and she was like i don't even want to talk about it like how did you say to get there so now i'm just like bro like she dealing with the shit with her mom she's saying rodney not picking up the phone she's saying it but then she's saying like rodney is a low-key or uh 
Like, but she was just saying that he was too aggressive. Let's just say that. She was saying he was too aggressive and stuff like that. So I'm just like, okay. At this point, I'll go with you. Bitch, are you dumb, 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 stupid? <sighs> Y'all, am I stupid? At this point, I like, oh my God, I've been blessed with all of this stuff. The perfect husband, the perfect car, the perfect everything. And who am I to not at least try to help this girl? Because what does this blood work mean? What does all this mean? At, at this point, I'm just like, y'all, I don't know what I'm just like. I'm just so sorry for her. I just felt fucking sorry for her. And so this is how it works. This is how you get from San Diego to San Isidro. All right. So what we did was we parked my car in El Cajon City, right? And we took from the El Cajon City trolley station because I didn't trust leaving my car in San Isidro which is right the city right before you get to Tijuana, Mexico, the city before you get out of the United States. So I took my car back to El Cajon where I lived at, which is like an hour away from TJ. So we took the trolley from, it's an hour on the trolley. The trolley is like a train that you take. So we took the trolley from El Cajon to TJ. I mean, to San Isidro, to the city right before. Then when you get to San Isidro, it's a whole process of getting over the border, which took an hour to even just get over there. We find we find a taxi or whatever. At this time, she has like a duffel bag. Y'all, I cannot make this up. I cannot make this up. She has a duffel bag. So I'm just like, oh. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like. You know, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, what the fuck? So, at the, now when I think back at it, I'm just like, she could have kidnapped me. She could have been a part of sex trafficking. I literally wasn't really telling anybody what was going on. I will get to the part where I do finally tell my, my brother what happened. All right. So, I, so we get to the clinic, you know, first off, let me tell you, when we get in the taxi and we show him the address, he already know what's up. He knew exactly who he's like. He spoke, he spoke in the clearest English he possibly could. Yeah, I know. He said, I know where to go. That says he said, I know where to go. Like he knew. So when we get to the clinic, I see a lot of black females. I see a lot of Hispanic females. I see a lot of um I see a lot of women, you know. And I'm just like, okay, this this makes sense. It's like a women's clinic, whatever the case is, or whatever, right? So she goes up and it's a nice, okay, we're in. Look, y'all, we are in a whole different country. We are in Tijuana, Mexico. I've been here before, but I'm just, I just want to make it clear to you guys that I'm no longer in the United States. And anybody that is from Dago would know that back then it was easier to cross the border. Like it was easier to do that. Now you have to have like a passport. I think back then all you needed was your, your California ID. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong if you still can't do that now, but I heard it's way, way harder. But yeah, all you need, so basically, the process was like bang, bada, boom. We was in there, you know what I'm saying? We was in Mexico living la vida loca. So we get to the clinic. The clinic was, you know, a nice little clinic. I didn't feel like it was sketch, I guess. The females is there, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, a nurse walks up to her. They already have her name down, blah, blah. They take her, like, to the front. And there's, like, two doors. And... They're like, so I see like where the girls are sitting on the side. Like if this was the waiting room, it wasn't no actual waiting room. It was just like chairs on the side. So I go over there and you guys, when I started like putting everything together, it finally fucking made sense what the fuck she was doing. And she was nowhere around for me to confront her until the nurse comes out and look, we must be right on time for whatever the fuck it is. Because she don't come out with the nurse. And the nurse like, we need some papers for you to sign. I'm like, what am I signing? What am I signing? What am I signing? And the nurse was very polite. And she was very well spoken. And she was a sweetheart. And I, I felt bad for coming at her like that. But at this, I should have had my energy like that on Yasmin. But at this nurse, I was just like, what, what am I signing? She was like, oh, your friend is, you know, your friend is getting a BBL. A Brazilian butler. 
and you just have to sign, you know, saying that you're going to be the, you're going to be her caretaker, you're going to be her designated driver, or I don't know if it's designated driver, you can be the one that's driving her and taking care of her because she can't drive herself, she's going to be highly um, medicated, um, and she's going to be in a lot of pain, like, she was just telling me all this stuff, and it was kind of like I had zoned out, and I couldn't believe Y'all, I still could not believe that I was in that fucking situation. Is this bitch serious? Is she, is she, is she serious? So I signed the paperwork. Yes, yes, y'all. I signed the paperwork. In a weird way, I felt like I was responsible for her. And at this point, I low-key was responsible for her. I... I okay, so not even 30 minutes have passed, and the nurse comes back out, and she's like, you know, the doctor isn't able to perform a BBL on her because she's she's under she's underweight. And, uh, you know, she doesn't have enough fat. Okay. So this is how I know that it was just a sketch clinic, just sketchy, just scandalous. Let me tell you guys something about surgeries. Um... When you get a surgery, you don't get your blood work done the same day. You get your blood work done weeks before because the doctor has to know, okay, it's for cholesterol high. Um, just everything that they need to know. You, you, you guys know, right? Everything they need to know. So another red flag, like where are we at? What clinic just get your blood work? Come get surgery. Did it? Clearly she had this planned out. Let's, let's be clear. She had this planned out. But let's just say the clinic was down for whatever. Okay? The clinic was, it was a black market. I don't even know if that's the right term to be using. But it was some shady ass shit. So you guys, um, when they came out and they said that, I was like, damn, so all this is for nothing. That's what that bitch get for lying. And I basically told the nurse, like, okay. Well, um, so what's up? She, so she, she can, um, I was like, so, you know, she not getting her surgery or whatever. So just tell her I said bye, you know, tell her I said chow chow and, uh, deuces. I'll tell her to be safe. I, I hope she know her. The nurse was like, no, no, no. She's still getting a procedure done. I'm confused. Come again. Oh yeah. Um, she just consented to get in, um, uh, and I'm about to make up some shit. I don't know exactly what they said, but Niloxion. Instead of fat transfer. Niloxion injections. What the fuck is that? AKA ass shots. She's getting some chemical shit in her ass. She wanted ass so bad. And here, you know, I'm about to like. It's never that serious, y'all. It's never. When I tell you. And if you're thinking about going to get surgery. Don't. First off, don't just play it. Do what you got to do. But don't do this sketchy ass shit. I hope nobody thinks after me listening to the story like, oh, yeah, I can just go to TJ. No. Do not. Like, y'all need to be careful. Because motherfuckers is putting anything into y'all. They putting ketchup and syrup into y'all asses. And y'all walking around looking like bozo the fucking clown. I was like, no. I'm sorry. I cannot get down with this. I don't know what that is. And the nurse was like, you know, she had a very soothing voice. She's like... No, we do this all the time. Don't worry. Um, she already consented to it. So, I mean, and you signed the documents. I'm I'm like, so am I stuck here? Because Chanel not stuck nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So, at this time, I'm already texting my brother after I found out she getting ass shots. And my brother is like, bro, you so fucking stupid. You always in this situation. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I'm finna come out there and dog that bitch on everything, cuz. You know, he a little criminal. So he like, on everything, cuz. And he, he said, I'm so fucking stupid. But really, he put himself in stupid situations too. So it's really like me and my brother have a contest, or we used to have a contest on whose situation is stupid. Excuse me. So we like, really? So, you know, the fact that he was trying to go bad on me, I understood. But at the same time, nigga, please. You done been through some shit. You done been through more motherfucking shit than anybody. You done put yourself into some shady ass fucking situations. But nevertheless, I understand why he was upset. He was worried about his little sister. Um, as he should. So, he's just like fucking going ham. And he like, I'm on the way. Um, I'm finna get, I'm finna link up with such and such. And we finna fly, we finna um dip over there. Da, da, da. So I'm like, 
okay, cool. That way we'll have a ride anyway. So I'm like, just tell me when you're on the way. Thank you for looking out, bro. I love you. Da, 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 da. So he was like, you know, so he's one of the only, he is the only person at the time that knew the exact story and exactly what was going on. So hours had passed. I went to get me some tacos. The nurse was really fucking nice too because she had turned on like the TV and like all that stuff like that. And I was talking to the girls and I was talking to the girls and I was telling them exactly what happened. Like I didn't even know this girl was in surgery. The girls was like, what? I was like, yes. They were like, you're a good ass person because hell no. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm too fucking good, right? So, I want to just get to the part. My brother does not end up coming because he didn't have his California ID, so he couldn't cross the border. So, that was that. But, um, the surgery did end up, it, it went about four hours, three to four hours. I don't remember. It was a good amount of time. To the point where I was like, my irritation had kind of went down a little bit because I was kind of excited to see her results. I know, right? I ain't shit. So yeah, I wanted to see her ass. And when I seen it, it looked really big. So I was just like, ugh. But she looked really tired. She looked really fucking in pain. As she should. Because you don't do people like that. You don't trick people into coming into fucking Mexico with you. That's not just what you do. That's not what you should do. So, and... So, after the surgery is over, basically, we have to get back to my house the same exact way. But instead, we can't be on the trolley because she just got a new ass. So, um, we sign, you know, the release stuff or whatever. And we get we get a, a cab to San Isidro. And then from San Isidro, we have to get a cab to El Cajon. Long ass ride. In, in the taxi ride or whatever, I, I see that she's in pain. She can't sit on her butt. So, she's like laying across a little bit and her feet are like. You know how like somebody's laying across and their feet are like up. So her feet were up in the air and then I was like in the corner. So it was just like irritating because she was like touching me. And I was just disgusted by her. So um, after that or whatever, she, so we wasn't really talking in the, in the, the taxi or nothing like that. And... I just remember just thinking like, I'm so fucking irritated right now, bro. And I know exactly what the fuck I'm going to do when I get to the house. That's that's all I was thinking. So we get out the taxi or whatever. And the taxi said X amount of price. Keep in mind, she's in pain and shit. And it was like, the taxi was like 150 or something like that. Some fucking ridiculous fucking amount. That it was a reasonable amount because we was leaving a whole different fucking country. So, um, she was just like. She's like acting all fucking like she could because the medication, she was all drowsy. I don't know. Where's my wallet? I said, your wallet's right there. Here, let me get it. Let me get the money. And gave it to him. Let's, bitch, I'm not paying for shit. So we already knew that wasn't going to fly. Like she should have known. She should have known that that wasn't going to fly. Bitch, bye. Anyway, so we end up, y'all, I'm spitting this shit. I got to do better. I'm sorry. Um... So, she gets in the house or whatever, and she's like, I kind of have to help her. Like, this is how bad. Like, y'all, she looked like she was in so much fucking pain. And I wanted to laugh because I'm like, that's what your lying ass get. And I can just only imagine having helium dioxide fluids in your ass. I don't know. I just made that up. But how painful it could be. So, she, um... She was all in pain and shit like that. And like she was fixing the pillows on the couch. And then she just like basically was laying down. And I was like, um, yeah. So uh, there's hella hotels by the airport downtown. Or um, Rodney can come get you. And she was like, she says, I'm like, Rodney don't even know I'm here. And I was like, what? And she was like, well, Rodney really don't even know I'm here. I'm like, of course, because you're a lying ass motherfucker. Like, of course. And I didn't say you were lying, but I was just like, of course. Of course. Of course he don't know, even know you're here. You made all that up because you knew that you was going to end up in my house. You knew that I was a native San Diegan and that I would know how to get through all this stuff. Maneuver all this shit for you. Finesse the whole fucking situation so that you could go get your ass done. 
Oh, and let's never forget how she couldn't go out because she was quote unquote sick. But really, it's because she couldn't drink before her surgery and she had to have X really amount of hours of sleep. Out of this, you know, out of this year texting me and shit like that. You would have fucking known, bro, that if you would have came at me like a real bitch, it'd have been nothing. All of it would have been set up and I still would have went with you to Mexico to get your ass done. Because that's just the type of fucking friend I am. But you were never my friend. You were an internet fucking personality that I didn't fucking know. And that's my fault, y'all. Do not be meeting up with these bitches. That's all I gotta fucking say about that. So I was just irritated. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Well, there's a bunch of hotels downtown. Um, you could start looking some up right now. And um, you need to go. You need to, you, you I, I'm sorry, you need to go. Like, I don't even think I said that. So I'm like, okay, you need to go. And she was like, really? And then she was just like, oh, okay. Or whatever. So she started looking up hotels. And I kept coming back from my room into the living room. Making sure, oh, did you find it or whatever? And I know she was drowsy. I know she was like. Call me what the fuck you want, y'all. But I did my fucking part. part. I successfully got her from point A to point B. To get a bigger ass. Okay. I got her from flat to fat. So that's all I needed to fucking do. At this point, I don't give a fuck what happens now. You need to go. I'm back in my country. I'm back in the USA. You need to get the fuck about my house. So she ended up finding a hotel and shit. And she's just like, okay, well, um, yeah, she just, you know, ended up like leaving out or whatever. Let me tell y'all something about this bitch. Not during, before, after the process, at my house, after the surgery, after we make it back hours later, y'all. Me just. You know, it's a process, a whole process from the borders. Oh, she was in a four hour surgery. So the whole time she had to apologize to me for fucking tricking me and being the fucking conniving ass bitch that she was. She never fucking apologized to me, bro. Not one motherfucking time at all. Never fucking apologized to me. Never said, thanks for doing this for me. I'm just like, what? And then if you know what's so funny is she did say little stuff like, um, I can't believe you stayed here. Like, oh my God, you the truth. You a real one. But never one fucking apology. And I just want to, you know, I'm going to wrap this up right quick because I know it's fucking crazy. I, I know it's going to be unbelievable. I was tricked into going to Mexico so this bitch could get a fat ass, ass shots. How would Julia Little Lost awesome put in her ass? So... I'm going to end this by saying that yeah, I have blocked her on Instagram because this is when I had my old Instagram page. I have blocked her. and But even when she had gotten to the taxi, she, you know when people kind of apologetic, they send long ass messages, apologize, and basically breaking down the situation, blah. Never did that. Then also, let me tell you guys something about her. I was still following one of her sisters on Instagram at the time. And... Her sister had did this Mother's Day post, right? And saying how her mom had been at the same job for 15 years. And that her mom and her dad, like, have been married for such and such. And then when she gets married, she wants to be just like her mom. Let me just tell y'all what I got from the fucking post. And this, you can tell when somebody a fucking crackhead. You can tell when somebody's on drugs. Her mom was never on fucking drugs. Her The sister tagged the mom's Instagram page like, you guys, I wish I could attach pictures, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to stir the fucking pot like that. But this was a function, functioning woman. I mean, this was a strong woman who took care of her family, a strong, God-fearing woman that this bitch lied and told me was a crackhead to manipulate me so that I could feel sorry for her because we would have the same situation. Do you see how fucking crazy this bitch is? Anyway, that's my story time because I'm getting heated again thinking about that. If you ever see this, Yasmin, I how I feel about the whole fucking situation. You never apologize, but I don't need no apology from you. You're a dirty ass, scum ass bitch. Um, your ass shots look good though. And peace out, y'all. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.